David Frayne, The Refusal of Work, Rethinking Post-Work Theory and Practice. Embark on an insightful journey that scrutinizes the entrenched culture of work and its impact on modern society in The Refusal of Work, Rethinking Post-Work Theory and Practice by David Frayne. Discover how contemporary capitalism has made work all-consuming, leave little room for leisure, and distorted our personal identities. This comprehensive summary illuminates how work has become central to our lives, creating a web of inequalities while sidelining the true essence of productivity. Delve into the history of work, examine the concept of Marx's alienation and find out about the ongoing resistance against all-encompassing labor. The Modern Society's Dangerous Obsession with Work Work is no longer a reliable source of income, rights, or belonging and society's fixation with it is detrimental. Work can be enjoyable if it is something one is passionate about. However, it can be mentally and physically exhausting, leaving one drained. Unfortunately, in modern capitalist societies, access to fulfilling work is not widespread. Many struggle with meaningless jobs, leading to the question of why society is obsessed with creating more work. The answer is not as simple as distributing wealth, our identities, community access, and status are now tied to our jobs. The decline of social services means even critical needs like healthcare and retirement are linked to employment. In contrast, pre-industrial societies prioritized free time over financial accumulation. A pay raise meant less work for the same money, calculated according to the workers' cost of living. But in today's society, more money means doing the same amount of work, and people work to enjoy their money instead of their time, leading to an obsession with consumerism, which demands more work. Ironically, the technology advancements that were supposed to reduce the drudgery of labor have led to more hours spent at work, especially for high-ranking individuals. Lower-ranking workers face low-paying jobs and insecurity while some jobless individuals struggle to get by. Work no longer provides a reliable income or a sense of belonging or rights. In conclusion, modern society's fixation with work for the sake of it is dangerous and detrimental to individuals' well-being. It is high time society re-evaluated its priorities. The value of work according to Marx Marx believed that work is essential to human fulfillment. He defined work as the purposeful reshaping of the natural world and saw value in it beyond just a paycheck. However, industrial forms of work during his time destroyed the possibility of fulfillment. Today, most workers no longer stand at machines, but the work is still monotonous, performative, and mentally taxing. Companies have tried to make workplaces more fun, but ultimately workers should still act as if work is enjoyable even if it is not. Colonization of Work The book highlights how work has taken over our lives, leaving us with no free time. We spend our non-work hours recovering from work and engaging in consumerism, all of which serve to sustain capitalism. The modern educational system is also geared to optimize young people for their next job. Advertisements convince us that buying goods can satisfy our needs, but in reality, it leaves us numb and trapped in the cycle of work consumerism. The overall message is that capitalism has colonized our lives, leaving us with little time to enjoy the meaningful aspects of life. The Myth of the Moral Job In the past, work and morality were intertwined to limit workers' leisure time, prevent political awakening, and maximize profits. Today, Societal and political perceptions have cemented the idea that a job is the only moral option, and those who don't work are seen as lazy or threats to society. However, history shows that people have resisted and rebelled against the notion of work as a moral necessity, and the struggle continues to this day. Resisting work, a moral choice. People who resist work are often judged harshly despite their alternative moral principle. The book explores the reasons and motivations behind their decision through interviews with individuals who have opted for a less work, less money lifestyle. David Frayne identifies breakpoints that forced interviewees to critically question their habits and beliefs, leading to a greater sense of connection and contentment. Despite this, expectations and stigma present ongoing challenges. 
the most successful resistors of work cultivate alternative sources of motivation and validation before changing their work life. Rethinking work-life balance. The solution to our dissatisfaction with work does not lie in individual self-optimization but in collective redistribution. The oversized role of work in our lives can only be effectively addressed by reorganizing and redistributing work. Reducing working hours and decoupling work from income are two solutions being tested in some countries. Ultimately, the issue is not with work itself but with the idea that only through paid labor can we attain social acceptance, status, and income. In this thought-provoking narration, David Frayne raises the alarm on the work-centric nature of modern society and the consequences it bears on our happiness, creativity, and overall well-being. He suggests that a collective reorganization and redistribution of work can usher in a more equitable world, where individuals are free to pursue their dreams beyond paid labor. By exploring concepts like reduced working hours and basic income, Frayne offers potential alternatives to a world in which work dominates existence. As the demands of the capitalist system and technological advancements continue to transform our experiences, it becomes imperative to investigate new pathways that prioritize human autonomy and redefine work's relationship with our lives.